film on changing uh, these uh, radius arms um, and put the adjustable brackets on them. Um, now, these ones are from Mini Sport, so these are the brackets here. This is this side. And I'll do the same on the other side, and they're basically like a, a serrated section like that, which has then a, a, a nut and bolt that goes through it, which is here. You know. yeah, this particular one's from Mini Sport, and then you've got this uh, serrated piece here. So you've got adjustment up and down in this larger hole, and then obviously this is the size of the bolt, um, and you can see that it grip, grips onto there, through this, and you can obviously move it, excuse me, you can move it up and down. So we'll pop them on, and then we'll show you what we're up to. So Mir's already put these gas shocks on uh, from the new uh, standard ones we had on it. The only issue I can see is with this being an alloy fin, obviously the uh, camber adjuster is not going to sit on it. So I'll make a, pit, a bar to go across here, so we can put it in the centre of the hub, um, and then check what what the camber is. Uh, after that, this is the camber tool here. This is from uh, Gunson. Make make all kinds of stuff. But that's the camber tool there. So I'll bring you back when we've got one on. Okay, so this is the uh, new bracket that's on, and you can see where it's lying at the moment. So if he takes the tension off, or lets it off, if you let it off, you can see where this can go. So in fact, it can actually, you can even pull this hub forward. So you can see that you can get this fairly central. Now, we, what we've done is, without damaging uh, the, the, the uh, pin and the thread, this is as far as we want to take up, and that's given us the camber where I think we need. So you'll lift it up again, and you'll see it's just using that. Okay, so if we put that on, and you can see that has to go on that way because it won't go on, it will go on the other way, but it's, it's designed so that it can come forward. So this has got a smaller side on it here. Okay, so we've, as I say, we've used that uh, that crowbar there to lift up this radius arm, and then uh, because it's slotted all the way along, it will centralise itself. So I'll take you around and show you. You obviously can't see anything on the hub, and maybe you can see a little bit there. But when you look at this wheel, we've just put two bolts on it, but you can actually see the camber on that wheel. If I keep that straight, you can see it from that outside tread how much the camber is on that. But that's going up as far as we we can go with it. Um, obviously we'll have to play around with this a little bit. But it's very basic, the kit. Um, and we'll see how well it works. So this, these are now sitting at one and a half degrees, the, the caster on them. Uh, <coughs> sorry, the camber I should say. Um, and when we put it down, I'm sure it'll, it'll look even slightly more negative. So, we've set them both up. This is the uh, camber gauge, and you can see that's one and a half degrees of uh, camber. And you can also adjust, because there's such a big hole behind these, like I showed earlier, uh, you can adjust the toe as well of the, of, the, of the radius arm. So what we did is use a pinch bar to get it to the right point and then clamp it. Now, on this one here, you can see that there are two grooves left. But this is correct, it's one and a half degrees camber. And, but you can see there's two grooves left. Now on the other side, I'm not going to take it apart. But, just to give you an idea. You can see that there isn't any grooves left on that. And it's almost flush with it. So, you know, don't go by thinking, now, to, for a disclaimer on this, uh, this subframe was in really good condition. The only thing was there was a couple of strip bolts uh, on the subframe and we had to uh, take the nuts off and, and re-weld new nuts on it so they could be slightly out of alignment and this is maybe what's causing this because this is exactly one and a half on the camber gauge as well. So maybe they are straight on a 
a brand new subframe, maybe not. Uh, there was nothing integrally wrong with the subframe, it's in really good nick, except the threads were stripped and we had to, re, uh, we had to cut the nuts out and, and redo them. So that's the only difference. What we have had to do on this one, on that back plate, is they're, they're kind of square like this, quite a large opening for that pin to go through. And we've had to take, put, a heart, put an arch into it, if you like, with a die grinder to give us the movement up. Um, after the bracket was adjusted correctly, we didn't have enough movement. We needed to move it up about half a mil, not even a mil, but we had to, I had to use the die grinder to clean it out a bit. So you might have a bit of adjustment. The, these are around 50 pounds from Mini Sport. If you go for the CAD ones, which are better brackets, they're 131 pounds. So, you know, you have to work out what you want to do. But anyway, so there we are. I hope that's of some help because I haven't seen these motor, Mini Sport ones on, on YouTube. I looked around, I couldn't find them. I saw the CAD ones going on. And then there's another style which has a bolt in here where you can adjust it up and down. Um, which seems a bit superfluous when you can actually do it by lifting the radius arm on a on a jemmy bar or a, or, a, or a bar. So so there we are. I hope that's of uh, some help and some interest. So we'll be doing the same thing with the front. Obviously on here we have uh, adjustable lower arms as you can see here. Um, the tie bars are adjustable, so it means we can adjust the um, the camber, the caster. <clears throat> and also these have the big 30mm uh, bottom ball joints in it which is supposed to give the center of <coughs> a lower center of gravity if you can see it on the bottom there the 30 30 mil longer than a normal ball joint so we'll see what happens there we are so that's the subframe in I'll put this tire on now and we'll uh, drop it down and show you how it looks you can see there's a bit of negative camber on there and once I wait the engines in and the seat and the roll cage, you know, glass, all the bits and pieces, it'll probably come out a bit further, but you can see that. I hope I can get it straight. Okay, to go on from there, so we're getting ready to fit the engine and box, sub front subframe back in. As you can see, these are standard tower bolts. What I'm going to do now is buy the ones with the holes through them. Um, and the idea, obviously, is that we can adjust this suspension. So. We can adjust this top. You can see I've got it on a ratchet here. This hex bar goes down through the, the front suspension. You can see I can turn it there. I'll go back the other way. And my query on this was, there's a guy from MED, uh, Stephen, works for MED, he runs the Mini 7s. And, and I mentioned this to him, I said, but what about, what's the point of a locking nut? And he said, well, they don't need, because you have to then get into tighten it, which is reasonably easy from the front, but not so easy from the back. And he said, you actually don't need the locking nuts. He said the sheer weight of the car um, stops, they, they, they haven't turned one bit and he's been racing it for a year or more. So I'm going to go with that. And uh, that's how we're going to better adjust it. So, because everybody knows with, the, especially with the rear suspension, if you, drop it down um, and the suspension's low, the arms or the extension arms and the off the high lows can come out, they can come out of place. So you've got to be careful when you're changing a wheel. So another little job we're going to do, we're going to change this. We've got a lower um, radiator hose and you can see this one's got the heater tee off it, which obviously we don't need in a track car. So that's coming off, I've got a new one to put on. And this obviously is for the mechanical fuel pump and obviously this is electric so what we're going to do actually is take a breather from here and what we'll do is we'll come up and come up and maybe attach it to here the new rocker cover I've got it's on its way should be here Monday or Tuesday has two breather pipes on it so it'll be breathing from the crankcase here there isn't one on this um, this uh, SNH uh, belt timing cover <clears throat> so we'll have one coming up from here Two coming out of the, the box and another one there on the on the housing, all right, uh, clutch housing. So that will give us enough to breathe, I think. The only other thing I've got to do is take this back out, take the thermostat out, and, and put a sleeve inside um, because we don't uh, we have a dry deck system on here, as you can see here. And uh, if you don't put the thermostat in, 
which obviously is only open and once it's open the water's flowing you need to put a sleeve which goes down inside and kind of <clears throat> um, uh, chokes the volume of water going through it's like a perforated sleeve I understand so I'm going to get that from uh, mini spares as well and I think that's probably it for today yeah so I mean it's put on the steering rack we'll tightened it but only roughly tightened it because obviously we want to check I'll take you around and show you that's the that's the front uh, there's the arches obviously what we want to do is make sure that this is right for the steering rack you can see it's quite high at the moment but we can you can adjust that and bring it to exactly where you want for the steering rack to make the steering centralize and these are, these are part of the bracket this is the bearing race but you put grease inside them to stop the paint going on so there we are